faccio una breve intro in italiano, poi mi toccherà parlare in inglese con questi ospiti internazionali. Loro sono tre, li avete visti prima se eravate qui con i loro inspiring speech. Eh, sono capi, fondatori di agenzie indipendenti internazionali, molto diverse tra loro, il titolo lo vedete. Allora, io farò loro le domande, quindi parlano loro. Uh, my question will be in English, uh, unluckily, for, for the audience, but I have to. So the first uh, question will be after the video we're going to see. Eine moderne Sex, sehr körperlich orientiert, ist aber auch ein ordentlicher Fußballer. Wurde da erneute Unterbrechung. Es ist der Rossi. Einer, der selbst auch ganz... Does it work? Okay. This one was one of the TV commercial or the YouTube commercial we used to launch the festival saying, okay, we are well known as creatives. Italians are creatives worldwide. And this was a good example of it. But the, the first question is, do you see Italians as creative like this? Or uh, is just something better than this? Um, maybe I... I, can, I i can add something to the uh, um, to the pictures we just saw. Um, the, com the, the comment, uh, the TV, you know, it, it was German, so I can translate it to you. He, sa he said, he said, uh, this player is a good football player. And I, th I think this is an answer, you know. So uh, it is, of course, that um, uh, th 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 these guys are, uh, the perception of Italy often is exactly that. So you, uh, it, it, it's a very good point. It's... Uh, It's they're v technically very good and gifted and everything, and of course, um, especially in football, mm, yeah, <laughs> you know, they tend to you know, be too creative and then you know, kind of fitting up everybody. Uh, but still, very good football players. All right. Not winning all the time, but Karen, what uh, do you too, think? Too often. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, 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 not, I'm not sure I'm really informed about all the work that comes out here. I was not uh, prepared to this question either, but then I, my perception, and then perception is reality, is that we miss you guys a little bit out there. So I don't know a lot about Italian creativity, and that's maybe the problem uh, about Italian creativity. Um, but I can't imagine that Italians are not creative. Of course not. I, I'm sure that everybody here in, in, in this room um, is creative. But that my whole speech was exactly about that is um, just maybe you just don't make it happen. Maybe you just uh, don't fight enough for it. Maybe that you, you just don't fight enough with your CEO. Maybe um, you don't find enough ways, the good way to talk to your clients. Um, I, I don't know what happens, but it's maybe, I think it's worthwhile um, really thinking about it because Belgium was exactly the same. It's a small country. It's, uh, I think for, we are Belgians and I think it's a good thing to be small because then they kind of not notice you that much. I think you have a bigger problem, you're big and the moment you do something, it, it's noticed. But anyway, I think this prototype research and development idea is maybe a really good thing as a, as a kickstarter to see how you can make your ideas happen. All right, maybe Ignazi from Spain, he's... Uh Maybe much similar in terms of... Uh, yeah, we're very similar. Can we, can we talk a bit about football, soccer, or is it...? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very difficult question. Well, of course, Italians, you are creative. Um, but I, I was thinking, do you know an agency called La, La Despensa? Yes? Okay, that's too bad for me, because I <laughs> wanted to use... And W? No, I don't think so. And Raiz Soto? No. Okay, these are three of the best agencies right now in, in Spain, and I'm sure that if I go to London, uh, more people will know them than if I come to Milano. And I also think that if you come to Barcelona, more people will know English agencies than Italian agencies. So for me, the, the first reflection is that we are all a bit like very similar. I mean, I come to Milano, I look at you, and the only difference is that you speak a little bit la 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 la, la you know? <laughs> But I go to uh, Stockholm, and of course, this is like, wow, I'm black. So uh, 
And we Latinos, I think we tend to ignore a little bit what it's like us. And we look a bit more far away. Think about wines. I mean, Spanish people tend to ignore a lot of Portuguese wines, whereas they are lovely. French people ignore Spanish wines a lot. Of course, I'm making cliché. So I think there is a cultural issue here. And second, about your brand, the Italian, I think the problem is that you have probably the most powerful national brand in the world, which is Italy. I mean, anywhere you think about, let's go to an Italian, and it's a whole world, you know? Something Spain has not managed to do. You have the story, many things we can talk about later on, but it's harder for you to build upon something so rooted. Okay, I stop. <laughs> Very good one, I think. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, the, there is a global issue too. It is uh, what you said is right. Basically, there is just there is just one or two countries or cultures that are uh, global. It's the Anglo-Saxon. It's basically Britain and America, and they are kind of monopolizing uh, the advertising attention in the world. Because I'm pretty sure that you guys don't know German advertising, for example, even if Germany is a big country. Uh, it is because of this kind of monopoly situation. We see it here, you know, we all speak English, you know, and so we're understanding English uh, uh, advertising and we see it on YouTube and stuff. Uh, and, um, and all the other cultures and languages are kind of far away because of this cultural uh, say, problem. Uh, I think this is one reason why the three of us don't know a lot about Italian advertising. But on the other hand, my my experience, you know, I was uh, kind of everywhere in the world, in China and in India and in the US and France, etc. is that nowadays we, we are in a global culture, uh, what means that everywhere in the world I've found a lot of really talented and gifted people. And I'm pretty sure that you find them in Vietnam too, you know, yeah. where you don't expect yeah, them. No, not really, but it's true. And, yeah. and, and so, so to me, the creative level is, is similar everywhere in the world. It's just uh, who looks on, that where and we don't look to Vietnam and who makes it <laughs> but happen? we look to New York it's all about making it happen that's something I say so often to my creative people as well in the agency I say what are you waiting for and they, they I think one of the problems creative sometimes have and people in general is we're quickly frustrated and we always wait for someone else to do things Whereas the, all the ideas that you saw here, um, the Let It Ring commercial that won seven lines uh, which is I think inspirational for many people it was shot by the two creative guys. They were 23 and 24 years old. They were on the street because you have to, we had to shoot it second by second because you never knew when the people were going to pick up the phone. So they were on the streets for two weeks shooting that commercial second by second all by themselves because we didn't have money. They were just out there. They made it happen. They won't, it's an awful commercial. They will gold in craft in Eurobest just because of that reason. And that's why I say just do it. The ideas are there, that's not the problem. The big problem is that we're always waiting for somebody else to make them happen. And you should not do that, you should just go out there. Everything is out there, you've got your iPhone, you've got your camera, you've got your people around you, you've got mannequins in the streets, you've got them all, do it. That's the only thing that makes the difference. It's not the ideas that make the difference, we have them all. It's the fact that you do them or you don't. That's my uh, opinion. You read. That's powerful. I was like, I'm going to shoot something right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was motivated. Uh, I just want to, to add something, because thinking about Italy again, um, I think about the power of Italian brands. Uh, there is like this uh, dichotomia, no? when in Spain we think about Italy. On one hand, there is like Berlusconi, parties, the South, a crazy country. Like, it's a cliche, but people have this idea, Italy, but have you been in Napoli? And then there is like, of course, you have this separation in your country. There is this, no, no, Motorola, you know, the, the fashion industry, the style, the Senio Italiano, the cars, you have cars, you have brands that have managed to become global. Moleskine, of course, is a, is a good example. So uh, I'm convinced that you have much more powerful and global brands than we have in Spain. And that's something you have managed to make very well. So, because I really don't like this debate about our creative agencies. You know, I think creativity is something that it's spread around agencies, startups, brands, uh, artisans. You know, it's something more that it connects uh, everywhere. So that, that's something that it's also Italy, you know, and, and it's, 
it's powerful and it's modern. So they are doing something very well that, for instance, I think that Barcelona is a very powerful design brand and creativity, but Madrid it's not so powerful. And yet many amazing things are going on in Madrid. No? So I don't know why Milan, if we are so similar to Barcelona, suddenly have brands so powerful that we don't have. We don't have a, a powerful car brand. It's Seat. And it's designed in Germany. They've made a lot of efforts, but well, well, it's designed in Barcelona by, by international people, but it's not an Alfa Romeo, you know? Uh, we don't have a Moleskine. Uh, I don't know. It's interesting to compare it. It's a very easy job for me because uh, just one question and uh, it goes on by itself. It's fine. Uh, now, just as in your speeches, you were uh, giving, in a way, advices to agencies, not specifically Italian agencies, but agencies, how to behave, how to sell ideas, how to work on ideas. Um, may I ask you an advice for clients? I mean, for uh, the, the sake of creativity, we need agencies, good agencies, good ideas, but we, I think we need good clients. So what's the advice you can give to this audience, which is mixed clients and agency in terms of getting the best from their agency, Italian agency, of course, as we are here. <laughs> um, just uh, one, just, I, I know, Ignazi, it's not an easy question, but just one main well, advice. One advice I would, I would give them is that um, be very short when the idea is wrong on your brand, just cut the crap. Don't talk hours about it with your agency. Just say, it's wrong, I don't want it. But if it's right, then talk hours about it and make it happen. Because once the, and that's why creative management, I believe is so important. Once an idea is right, you can go very, very, very far creatively because it will always be right for your brand. And right means right for your brand, right with the tonality of your brand or for your product. But if it's right, then really talk, talk through it and, and don't be afraid to be very creative on an idea that is right because it will always have wings. That would be my uh, advice to them. Cool. Okay, my, my advice is, um, is twofold. Uh, it's what I had in my speech too. It's, the first one is courage. Um, I discussed with some... Italians here too, and often I hear from from the Italians that often here clients lack a little bit of courage, especially within a crisis. You know where people are more like, uh, you know, they're f more afraid. That, but I think that only courage helps. Uh, this is one, and the other one is uh, my centerpiece of thinking. The last two years is is to s perceive your brand, a brand as a broadcaster. Uh, as a teller of continuous stories and not a developer of one idea. Thank you. But, but I, I, would, I would really, I think it's too easy to look at the clients. I think we are, I think the agencies are so, we create so bad, bad image and so bad habits by always trying to push those ideas that are maybe fantastic, but that's got nothing to do with their brands. They're fed up. They don't trust us anymore. Um, and I think they're right. I wouldn't trust an agency. Many agencies, I wouldn't trust them for a damn if they come and present their ideas because they only have one agenda, their own portfolio, their own can lines. When I feel this at the agency, I really have a problem. I tell my creatives, okay, that's a great idea. I promise you it will be sold, but not for this client. I never ever go to the client with an idea that I don't think is right for him. And if you do that consciously with your client day after day that they start to trust you on small things and on big things when you have to make a catalog that you do that catalog and really well and you do the shit really well more professionally than anyone else would do it and then you, you build you build trust with small ideas with big ideas and then they say jesus i can trust them and all of a sudden you can sell iq street view high looks even because they know that what you do is right for them and i i think the agencies have a huge responsibility in in that uh, well first i think that there are many people sat down here that have bigger clients than I do, and I could, I could use your advice on how to convince a client, Sure. okay, because it's, it's like, that's the piedra filosofal. Uh, I was thinking maybe we could ask Albert Honest, I mean, you're asking a guy that has a dinosaur as a new business director, so <laughs> I don't know if I'm the right guy to answer. Uh, 
However, I think it's something a good friend told me once. I mean, selling creativity, it's about sed seducing. Okay, you don't uh, sell a big campaign if you don't seduce the one who has the money and that ultimately is going to assume the biggest risk. Uh, so a, a good friend of mine told me once, talking about seducing women, he said, listen, it's, uh, well, we had a, a big discussion about that and it was very interesting because uh, we, we ended with a conclusion that you can never seduce a woman that really doesn't want to go with you. It, it's not being seductive doesn't mean taking someone that ignores you and doesn't like you and making a pavo real, ba 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 ba, and she goes to bed with you. No. I mean, eventually there are people that might go with you. And eventually there are people that don't. And they don't have a feeling, they don't understand you, you don't understand them. So seducing is more about not spoiling it when you find the match than building things that do not exist. So to me, the only times I've managed to make good things with clients, it's when there was a feeling. From the beginning, we were talking, they trusted me. I trusted them. We liked each other. And, 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 and then it worked. Anytime I was trying to struggle with people, that they were looking at me as someone trying to sell, that I looked at him and I said, I would not go to have a beer with this guy afterwards. I've never sold a good story to them. Because they feel it. They know that you don't like them. So to me, it's about finding the people that really connect with you. And it's, it's a relationship. It's no client, agency. It's just two people uh, living a love story. That's <laughs> uh, fine. Thank you. No, no, I totally agree with you anyway. Uh, I mean, the clients, uh, um, the, the relationship is the key, understanding the client. I think I'm the first always. Uh, and I'm representing also ASOCOM and one of the association was uh, trying to do this uh, this festival just to really put uh, the clients and the agencies together and to, to chat each other and to find together a solution because it's really a, a win-win it's not someone selling and, and not someone buying but it's doing things together that's my that's my thought uh, I, I know we have a few minutes uh, uh, more uh, so I go to the last question for you which is just uh, an overview um, about the how, on, from your perspective, the international market uh, is uh, evolving. I mean, as usually in Italy, we see, we say, uh, we come a little bit later. It's not always true, of course, but sometimes something happens abroad and then we follow a little bit. In certain fields, we for sure are the one open, that open the, the, the road but sometimes, uh, and, and often in advertising, we are a little bit, maybe one year later, sometimes. So what's, what's happening from your perspective in terms of uh, uh, advertising world? Big networks, media agencies, uh, in independent agency? That, I know it's a very long question and a long answer, but try to, to keep it. Um, we, we just uh, completely t changed our, um, no, we m evolved our vision from everything is media to big data needs big ideas. That's the new, the new slogan that we put on our website. And um, I think the whole big data thing is a real challenge to us because it's not so easy to know what to, to do with that creatively. Uh, that whole consumer journey that clients are so occupied with now um, and how to touch them at each point of... Uh, uh, so I think that's going to be the big debate, how creatively we, I saw the speech of Hegarty and Droga as well in, in Cannes and they said it as well. I mean, what are we going to do with all these big data, um, big data or just data, as long as they don't become smart data and that next to that there are no big ideas. Um, we have nothing with those big data yet. Media agency become competitors because they sell the content that is in real time um, linked to the big data. They become our big competitors. I have two media agencies who ran away with the whole uh, uh, online digital campaign of my clients. My client came back because they feel that we can kind of manage the content better than they can. But you feel every, the, the whole thing is, is, is blurring there. And I think our big challenge is to really understand that well as agencies, as an agency, what does that mean in terms of the deliverables, the creative, the content that we will have to deliver tomorrow. And we call that now from 360 degrees to 360 to the third, because the implication of this big data communication is surely that we have a, a huge and exponential multiplication of content, much, much, much more content, but always on a big, 
central idea. So how to keep that big central idea as we had it before on the brand equity, but then multiply it in huge messages uh, derived from big data. For me, that's really the, the, the things we will have to tackle and then be a step ahead of media agencies, of data scientists, of all those people that are there in the market and that try to steal the bread, our bread uh, of the table. Okay, just, sorry, just a very short answer because yeah. we have a next uh, guest from Los Angeles who is waiting and uh, it's... Uh, okay, we're, we're, no, no. Uh, to, to me, the first thing is that all this revolution we said 10 years ago, advertising, I mean, you just have to go into a newspaper and realize it's a lie. I mean, banners are there, they are just pushing. Now even you don't have flash, okay? Which was the biggest advancement in terms of uh, multimedia communication and Apple just killed it. So, I mean, reality is much far away from what I w had dreamt it would be, okay? And just the second thing that makes me feel much more optimistic is that there is this book, Madison Ballet, that I recommend you to read about advertising agencies jumping into the startup uh, arena, which is it's lovely because it's a very honest point of view. And I think that basically what is happening and what I hope will continue happening, it's very much aligned in what you've very well presented. Creative people need to add value and they are breaking the rules. They are into the, the maker's revolution. They are into hacking, into prototyping. And the more people keep on doing this, the more respect advertising agencies will learn from people with money willing to invest it in business, what we call advertisers, which is a word I hate, okay? They are clients, they are uh, entrepreneurs. This is how you should look at them. And if this happens, I will feel very happy. Sorry. Sure. Time. Thank no you. problem, I'm very short. It's, I love Madison Valley. I, I, I would have used the complicated word convergence, but Madison Valley, it's very good. I'll take it. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Madison, Madison Valley, and uh, because you asked about what is a global trend, uh, it is 365, 24-7, this is the trend, you find it everywhere, plus Madison Valley uh, saying that the technology thing is basically, is a basis of uh, Madison Valley. So The big data, okay. there are yeah. many things going on. All right, I'm so sorry we have to, to stop our conversation. It was really inspiring, I think, I hope, for uh, everybody. Uh, we have to close. I thank you very much for, for you for coming here to this festival. I hope, really hope it's the first edition of a long story. And so thank you for, very much for coming and for giving your advice. Thank you. Bye. Ciao.